Hello and welcome back. There's one more small step that I wanted to show you that's available on the passport local strategy that we can set up. Let's just get straight to it back in the, the index.js where we've just implemented this passport.use. We scroll up and we, we saw that we, we've previously implemented this serialized user function. And as a, a quick reminder, we receive the user that comes back from the end result of our verify callback and that authenticate function in the router. And we are indeed logging out the whole user. Instead of logging out the whole user, let's just log out the user ID because that's all that we're passing through into the cookie that's being stored. And we, we saw that in the last lesson, the value of the cookie is just that user ID. I think it's a good idea to make sure that you only are storing that user ID. If you store the whole user, there's going to be some sensitive information in that cookie that's going to be available out on, on the web because that's anyone can grab that cookie from, from the browser. So just ensure that you're only storing information that is not really valuable. And the user ID is just something that will be useful to have on the front end. And so I haven't put the name or the email address or anything like that. The serialized user is used to stuff information into the cookie. There is this function called deserialize user, which is going to kind of do the opposite and take the, the information from the cookie. And then it's a convenient way for us then in our middleware to take the information from the cookie and then do some work with that information to provide some more information about the user if we needed to do it. So the utility behind this is imagine on every single request in your API required to know the, the user ID, the name and email. If you had to do a DB call on every single request that in your API, it's just going to be like, it can become a very expensive operation to query the DB every single time if you're doing the same thing over and over again. This deserialized user function is going to give us a way to do that work once and then just attach that information onto the request so that it's available to the rest of the, the handlers downstream of this middleware function. So in another way, it's a middleware function that we're going to register that's going to extract the user ID out of the serialized user function, take that ID and then we can search the database one time, retrieve the, the user and then attach any other properties from that user onto the request. So that's available to any other downstream request handler and they can just reference the request.user object. So hopefully that makes sense. It might make a little bit more sense once we actually write the code and inspect what's going on. So let's do that right now. We'll say deserialized user, this takes in a callback. The first argument is going to be the actual property that's being extracted from the, the cookie. So because we're storing the ID, we're just going to call this ID. And then the second argument would be another done callback that we can make use of. And let's just set up a console log here so that we can see where this happens in the chain of events. I'll just say deserializing user, and then we'll pass in that ID in here just to see what we get back. And the next step here is we want to find a user from the database. So we'll say db.find1, and that's a method that we've set up previously, this find1 method, and it takes in an ID. So we'll say find1 by ID, and we'll pass that in. Then we can do a quick conditional check. We can say if we do have a user, we can then return the done callback, and there is no error. And then the next argument in the done function is the user. So we'll say user is user.id. And then next up, we will put an email key here. And we'll say user.email. And then we'll handle the case. If there is no user, we can return done. And then instead of null, this will be an error case. So in the error case here, if the, the database hasn't been able to find a user at this point, we can actually throw a proper JavaScript error here. So we can just say new error, and then we'll just say no user with ID is found. Before we run this, a quick reminder, the deserialized user is going to extract the information from the cookie. It's gonna take that ID, it's going to search the database for a user, if there is a user with it, we're just going to extract an extra piece of information that we can use downstream of this middleware. And that's that email property. And then if there is an error here, we actually want to return an error in the done function. And so let's just do a quick test. Once again, in Postman, I'm going to hit a register here to get our user and let's do a login. Okay. And take note that we've only seen 
the console logs up to serialized user. And this is generally what happens is the, the login function handles the authentication and then the deserialized user function is only going to happen on endpoints that then get called onto the API going forward. So we could test this on a, another endpoint like the logout that we've set up previously. So we can just set up a new tab with a post and then reference the, the logout. This is just really to see what, what comes out of that deserialized user function. So if I hit send here, you'll see that we, we get logged out successfully, but that's just boilerplate for now. What's interesting here is we see at the end of the console log that we do indeed hit that the, the console log over here of deserializing the user. And then we have to, at this point, just kind of trust that the user with the email address is being passed on to the downstream middleware because we actually haven't wired that up yet. Having said that, I think we have come a long way in these past few lessons. We've done a lot of work to set up Passport. The full flow of Passport has now been implemented. We've tested a few different cases to see if the error handling is working okay. And there, there may be a few uh, bugs here and there, but the essential point here is the whole flow of Passport has been implemented and we've got a working version of it. And we can obviously make this more robust as, as time goes on. But the, the point of what we've been trying to understand here is like how, how this authentication flow works, what parts and methods are needed to actually set up this local authentication strategy. And we now have a way of validating a user in our API. So we're going to take a break in this module. In the next one, we're going to start looking at how do we authenticate endpoints? How do we differentiate between a endpoint that doesn't require authentication? How do we lock down endpoints that actually need to be authenticated? Now that we have that cookie, we've got the serialized user, the deserialized user. We've got a way of rejecting requests. How do we actually go about locking down our API on certain authenticated endpoints. So in the next module, we're going to take a look at that. And so well done on getting this far. We've done some great work. I'll see you in the next module. Cheers for now.